today I want to do a final review on the Jeffree Star Blue Blood Palette. If you are new to my channel, I have now done 11 looks with this. I will link my first impression as well as my 10 looks one palette up in the corner if you want to check that out. So I feel like I have a pretty good grasp on the formula and pretty much everything about this palette now because I've used every shade at least once. So I think we should just get into it. And I guess what I'll do is I will just kind of break down every shade for you and tell you how I feel like it performs, what I feel like can be improved, what I did and didn't like about these shadows. So let's just get into it. Alright, so let's just go by rose here. So let's start off with this first kind of white shimmery shade, which is called Cullinan. I really like this shade. This is the perfect inner corner shade. One thing I will say about the shade though is that it is not super opaque even when you spray it. So it's going to perform a lot better either on top of like a cut crease or layered above another shadow, but not so much if you like put down your crease and then you go in with that shade on your lid. You're probably going to see your crease shade kind of poking through unless you do a cut crease, like I said, or unless you don't really mind that. But for me, if I layer this just on top of my lid without doing a cut crease or anything or having some kind of a base down first. It's going to be a little bit transparent. That's only if you put it on the lid though. If you put it in the inner corner, it is totally fine. I do still really, really like this shade. I've even seen some people use this as a face highlighter and it looks amazing on them. For me, I think it would be a little bit too light possibly and also a little bit too intense. I don't really like the super intense highlighter personally, so I don't think I'll be trying this. And this palette is so uncomfortable to hold for a very long period of time. Moving on, we have, I think this is called Mint Tea. I really like this shade. I honestly really like all of the light blues, but speaking of this one in particular, I really like this. I think it shows up nicely. I will say though, for all of the pastel shades, uh, they're going to perform better if you put them on top of a tacky base. But that really goes for all shadow if you want to get like maximum pigmentation out of them. But if you do want to use these as transition shades, they work perfectly. So moving on, we have the second shimmer in the palette. And this one is called Crystal Flesh. Crystal Flesh. <laughs> I do really like this shade as well. This is what I have in my inner corners today. I will say that for me, the shade is not that versatile. I'm not really someone who mixes cool and warm tones a lot. So for me to kind of mix this with a lot of the uh, blue shades, it's just not really something that appeals to me. So that is why you haven't seen me use this in a lot of looks. I did use it in, I think, two of my looks, possibly three of my looks. Uh, yeah, just go check out that video if you haven't already seen it, but I do think it's a really, really good shade and I see why he put it in here, but personally, I'm just not going to be reaching for that shade in particular that much. So moving on, we have another one that is a light blue matte, which is called I Am Cold. I really like this shade a lot too, and I guess I will just kind of say the same things about both of these shades. So I'm not going to really go too into depth about this one, but it's a really good shade as well. And then moving on, I'm going to bundle these two in together because they are also very similar. So this is Untouchable and Priceless. And what I will say about the shades is that for my skin tone, they don't really show up. Um, I was having a hard time using them both as a transition shade and also trying to layer them in my inner corner And I feel like the only times that I would really use these would be on top of a cut crease and I'm not really the person who does like a ton of cut creases and I also don't really put a lot of mattes on top of my cut creases So I'm not really going to be using these two shades a whole lot um, I will say that this shade right here is a nice transition shade to the one right underneath it, but this one can't really be used as a transition shade for anything in my opinion, even the shade down here, because this one also just does not show up on my skin, but I will get to that. So for me, the shade is kind of not useless, but it's just one of those shades that I know that I won't be reaching for that much. But again, like the quality of the shadow is great, but for my skin tone, it's just, I don't know, it's just kind of unnecessary, I suppose. So moving on to the next row here, we have Power, which is just a gray shadow. I think I only used this once. Uh, so I can't really speak like too much of it, but it seemed like it had the same formula as the dark shadows down here So I do really like these two. So I did like this one as well um, I will say though for like the dark mattes They are a little bit hard to blend out especially if you don't set your base But if you do set your base, they're a lot harder to build up if that makes sense Like you're not going to get the same kind of pigmentation as you would if you go in on a sticky base and if you do just pack them on, they are a little bit hard to blend out. And since there aren't really that many shadows in this palette that can be helped to blend out the darker shadows, you might have to be patient with these when you work with them. I wouldn't use this palette if I was in a hurry, because like I said, they do take quite a long time to build up. And I really had to take my time with all of these looks to make sure that they look blended. 
moving on, we have another blue matte. This is more of a cool tone matte. I really like this. I think this is my favorite blue in this palette. This is so pigmented, so easy to work with. Goes on like a dream. It's so smooth. I just, I love everything about this shadow. I think this is very unique. I don't think I have a blue like this in my collection. So super happy he put this in here. Um, next up, we have a shade that I am not particularly a fan of. I think I only used this shadow once. And the reason why I don't like this shadow so much is because it's a satin. And I am not one to use satins. I prefer very foiled, shimmery, metallic shadows over a satin. And a satin just doesn't do it for me. So I just never find myself wanting to use a shadow like that because it's just not intense enough for my liking. And if I want to have something that is similar, I will just reach for a matte because I feel like a satin isn't really going to make that big of a difference, you know? So that's just personal preference. So I mean, I think the shadow itself is beautiful. But for me, working with this is just not that exciting. Another thing I want to mention with these shimmers, especially this one and also this one and this one, but I guess I will get more into the shadow as we go. But some of the shimmers have quite a bit of fallout, especially this one up here. I found that I had a lot of fallout with this one. Uh, so I definitely would recommend spraying your brush with all of these uh, or doing your face last because otherwise you are going to have, you know, glitter and fallout all over your face and also with the mattes. I found that a lot of them had a lot of fallout, especially if I went in with like a bigger brush and started blending them. I definitely found that I had a lot of fallout. Uh, my best advice would be to go in with a smaller brush and really pack these shadows on and then start to blend them. You don't want to go in with a fully packed brush and start doing this because like I said, you're gonna have shadow all over your face and it kind of makes a mess. So thankfully I'm used to working with kind of powdery shadows and it doesn't really bother me, but if that's a problem for you, you might not like a lot of these mattes. So moving on to this blue shimmer down here, which is called, I keep forgetting the names. This is called Ice Tray. I love this. I think this is gorgeous. This, uh, I think I had some of that blue on my finger. But this is what this looks like. This is stunning. Um, super easy to work with. Uh, it layers really nicely. It builds up. It's not transparent at all. It's very opaque. It's very shimmery. It's uh, it's really pretty. I don't know what else to say about the shadow other than I think it is stunning. And it's probably one of my favorites in this palette. So moving on to what looks to be more of a blue probably for you. But actually when you put this on your eyes, it's going to be more purple. And that made me really happy because it's nice to have a shadow that's not just blue, especially like a matte. I'm sorry, but this palette is being a pain in the ass to hold right now. But yeah, this shadow is so pretty. What is this called? It's called Blue Monday. I'm not really sure why it's called Blue Monday. It should just be called Purple Monday, but it's really, really pretty. And I love using this along with the kind of pinky pastel matte. I think they go really nicely together. And I also think it goes pretty nicely with this teal color or like green teal color down here. Actually, it kind of goes good with all of the shades in this palette. So I love this. I think it performs really nicely. It's also one of those shadows that's a little bit hard to blend, but like I said, all of the mattes are pretty much like that. So even though I say that I think a shadow is really good, they're all pretty hard to blend. So I just want to kind of say that many times over again, but if you are someone who doesn't like to blend and who likes the shadows to blend themselves, these are not going to do that. So I'm just putting that out there. So I think one of the easiest shadows to work with for me was probably this tealy kind of green shade. Uh, this is stunning as well. I really, really love this. I think it goes really well with the rest of the colors in this palette. Uh, this mint tea is a beautiful transition shade for this, or even if you want to use it like half and half in your crease, they're just stunning. Uh, this shadow down here is his basic, just, you know, brow one highlight, set your primer stuff, which I don't really ever do. So I didn't get much use out of this shadow, except for I did set my lid a couple of times just to kind of test it out and see how the shadows would lay on top of a set primer instead of an unset primer. So that's really the only times I ever use this. I can also see using this if you need a little bit of help blending out one of the mattes that you put down and kind of like erase a little bit if you overdid it. So. I mean, it's good to have this in here and in a palette that's this big, I don't really mind if one of the slots are taken up by a shadow like this. It's when palettes are a lot smaller, it's like a nine pan palette. I get really annoyed when they put in one of these in every palette because we all have them already. But in this palette, since it's so big, I don't really mind it. And I definitely think it has a place in here. Uh, the next shadow is one that I'm kind of annoyed by, honestly, because like I said before, like this shadow just doesn't really show up on me at all. And I just, I don't know what I would use this for. 
because when I look at this, it's like a very light brown transition shades, but if I want to use this one as a transition shade to any of these other colors, I just don't think they're going to mix very well in together. I, I'm not the kind of person who will use a brown as a transition shade to a color. Like if I'm going to use a color, I want to use another color as a transition shade. I don't want to use some kind of a beige because I feel like a lot of the time looks will end up kind of muddy. Like imagine if you go in with this as a transition shade and then you try to go in with this blue. Like mixing these two shadows in together, like I don't know what I have on my finger already, but like that's just not a nice color. Do you see what I mean? Like I just, I wouldn't do that and now I need to clean my palette because that made a mess, but I just, I, I don't understand this shadow personally. I would say if there was a brown in this palette, I would get it. Like if there was a darker brown, but since there's not a darker brown in here, it just doesn't really make sense for me to have this. So for me, this was a bit of a waste of space, if you will. I can see maybe he put this in here in case someone has a darker skin tone and they want to use this to set their primer. But again, I just, I don't really like it. <laughs> All right, I tried to clean off these shades a little bit so they look a bit more presentable and they don't annoy me so much. So let's move on to one of my absolute favorite shades in this palette. This is a teal that I have on my lid today, but I also topped it with the top shade to lighten it up a little bit. This is called Entitled and it's such a beautiful teal shimmer and it's absolutely gorgeous. And I love using this along with the matte kind of greeny teal shade. I think they go so well together. Um, I also think they go really nice together with any of the blues in this palette. So the color story in this is just so well thought out and not something that I would probably ever put together myself. So I do really like the combination of colors in this and I didn't even have a problem coming up with 10 looks with this palette. It was honestly so easy and I feel like all of the looks came up looking pretty different in the end. So I think he did a fantastic job with the colors in this palette and there's only like probably two that I would change if I could. Uh, let's move on to like, I guess the most interesting shade in this palette because this is the blue, very kind of glittery, looks to be wet foil, but when you swatch it, it's very, 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 very chunky. <laughs> it's a very interesting formula. And I found that the one time I did use it, I was honestly really afraid to put it on my eyes because I didn't have any glitter glue on hand. And I usually do, and I don't know where I put it. And I was like, oh my God, I don't know if I want to use this. I'm going to get fallout everywhere. So I packed a bunch of powder under my eyes to make sure that it would catch any fallout that potentially was going to come down there. But when I put the shadow on my brush and I sprayed it with some Fix Plus, it went on so smoothly. And I never would have guessed from swatching the shadow that that's what it would look like. It is amazing. The only problem that I had with the shadow was uh, throughout the day, I found myself having kind of blue glitter specks on my face and they're not the kind of glitter specks that you can just brush away because when I try that, I literally smeared like blue glitters all over my face and I ended up having like blue streaks. So thankfully that was at the end of the day and I'm never going to use the shadow again without a glitter glue because that is just not worth it. <laughs> But the shadow itself is absolutely stunning and the only reason why I didn't use this more than once was because I didn't have any glitter glue on hand. So whenever I end up picking up some glitter glue, this will be one of the first shadows that I reach for because I think this is so pretty. So moving into the last two shades in the palette, I'm just going to bundle these together because the formulas are very similar. So this is a dark teal and this is a very, very dark blue. Um, I like both of these shades a lot. I love when there's dark mattes in the palette, especially if some of the shimmers in here are dark as well, because I get really annoyed when like the darkest shade in the palette is a shimmer for some reason. Like that just really annoys me because I like to be able to have something of similar depth in my crease. So these two colors are fantastic and I love these. This one goes so well with the teal matte as well as the teal shimmer. And this one goes so nicely with all of the blues in this palette and this purple as well and I just I love these two shadows so much again they are a bit hard to work with I'm going to put this palette down because my hand is falling asleep but I mean like I said I love the shadows in this palette so much uh, so just like a couple of more things I want to mention before we kind of close up this video and I give you my final thoughts um, my eyes are usually not very sensitive, but using a lot of these shadows, I had the same problem with the Alien palette, but in the Alien palette, it was mostly the shimmers. Uh, and with the shimmers, when I got them on my eyes, and sometimes I would have a little bit of fallout fall into my eye, it really 
stung like it was it was bad like it really hurt my eyes and I noticed with this palette that a lot of the shades in this palette made my eyes water and not only when I was applying my makeup but even when I was out and about like let's say I was outside and it was a little bit windy and I noticed a little bit of the shadow maybe like coming into my eye my eyes would start watering and they wouldn't stop for like an hour so I mean that's a bit of an issue and I would say if you have sensitive eyes you might have this problem too. I can't promise that you won't. And I know a lot of people who don't have this problem and that is great, but I've also heard a lot of people say the same thing about the Alien palette that I did, that they also have problems with some of the shadows hurting their eyes. So there's obviously something in Jeffree Star's formula that's doing that to me. Uh, it's not going to stop me from using the palette. It's also not going to make me say anything bad about this palette because it could just be my eyes. I honestly don't really know. Um, I actually had a really good time playing with this palette. I think the quality of this is fantastic. I do think that it's not a beginner friendly palette because of the color story and the formula. I think the formula is a bit hard to work with and I feel like this palette, especially the color story, because some of these colors are a little bit hard to kind of pair together, is more meant for like artistic Instagram kind of cuckries looks because that's the best way to be able to use a lot of these shadows together is if they don't touch each other. So, I mean, I don't know if like your average everyday consumer who wears makeup to work and just wants to kind of have fun and do some blue eyeshadow is really going to enjoy this palette that much. I could be very, very wrong, but I do feel like this is the kind of palette that he made because he wants people to make like crazy cool looks to post on Instagram with. But for me, it's definitely not for someone who doesn't do eyeshadow that often. I would say if you're not very experienced with eyeshadows, you might not enjoy this palette that much. But if you are someone who loves experiment like myself and who loves color, who loves blue eyeshadows and is fascinated by this color story, I think you're going to really like it. So I'm just going to leave you with that, I guess. Uh, conclusion, I like this palette. Do I love it? No, maybe not, because like I said, it's really annoying to have my eyes water all day constantly, but you know what? I think the palette is great, and my eyes are probably different than a lot of other people's eyes, so I'm not going to pull this palette down because of that. And I also think the color story is great. I think he did a fantastic job with this palette. I will say, the packaging is a little bit annoying. I'm sorry, but like, if I'm going to hold my palette up like this for... This is such a YouTuber problem though, but if I'm going to be holding this palette up to show you guys, and even when I was doing my 10 looks with it, like, it's a pain in the ass to, like, hold this like this. It just is. Like, I'm sorry. Like, if I was not a YouTuber, I wouldn't complain about this, but as a YouTuber, it's annoying, and that's all I'm going to say. So, yeah, let me know if you picked up this palette. Let me know what your opinion was on this. I hope you found this review somewhat helpful, at least, because I feel like I have a pretty good grasp on every shadow in this palette, and I thought I would share my thoughts. So, I hope you liked this video. If you are new to my channel, I would love it if you would consider subscribing, and I will see you in my next one. Bye.